Hey everyone, welcome to Mac Break. This is Alex Lindsay sitting in for Leo, and I'm here with Tom Anderson and Andy Anako. And of course, we're going to be talking about Steve Jobs' little vacation. Uh, whether you should get a Verizon iPhone just yet, and how not to purchase apps by accident. Right here on Mac Break, coming up. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 230 for January 18th, 2011. Apple buys Luxembourg. This episode of MacBreak is brought to you by Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash MacBreak. And by Gazelle, the easiest way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, Gazelle it. For a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com, bonus code MacBreak. And by Ford, introducing the all-new 2012 Ford Focus Electric with voice-activated sync and My Ford Touch, featuring gas-free power, zero CO2 emissions, and battery management technology that lets you go the distance. Learn more at focuselectricpower.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Mac Break Weekly. Uh, this is... Uh, it's not really Leo, is it? I don't, I don't think I could fool him. I was going to try. I was going to try to go down this path of, of, of impersonating Leo, and then everyone would make fun of me, including Leo, and so I decided not to. This is Alex. Uh, Leo, of course, is at Regis and Kelly uh, doing, his, uh, doing his thing, and you can check that out online. Uh, but, uh, but I am going to be uh, helming uh, for today. And in the studio, uh, we have uh, the illustrious <laughs> Tom Anderson. Hey, Tom. <laughs> Hi. Hi. And, uh, and, and coming in from his remote studio in, uh, in, in Boston, uh, or out somewhere near Boston, is Andy Anatko. Hey, Andy. That's right. I'm broadcasting today from the This Week in Tech party van. If you can guess where I am and come by and say the phrase that pays, well, what do you know? You'll get a free T-shirt or a free set of winter gloves that I use to knock the ice <laughs> off of my car. Or you're going yeah. to get whatever, whatever we have in the... Uh, uh, you know, laying around in the, you know, in, 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 in the, in the car. What yeah, else do you exactly. have there, Andy? I mean, what do you have for people here? Well, let's see. I got, uh, scotch tape, uh, alkaline batteries. Oh. I've got the, uh, I've got a Beatles tape that, uh, my friend John sent me a while back. Uh, the, I don't have a, even have a tape back H paper mate marker or the case that the, uh, cassette came in. Uh, so all of this, I'll, I'm going to lock, I'm going to put this back into the prize treasure chest. And I'm locking the prize treasure chest, and uh, and that key is only going to be openable uh, by the pe person who has the phrase that pays. So, uh, <laughs> by all means, I, well, I am I am the I am the Herb Parlick of uh, of internet radio promotion here. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you just tuning in, or for those of you listening, we had we had some connectivity issues, but we've gotten it working now. And Andy is coming in via Skype on the iPhone, so um, so this is working, and it's looking remarkably uh, stable. Are you, what are you using to uh, to to attach your iPhone? Uh, I can't show you because I have to disconnect it. Uh, this is this is the uh, okay. It's this is my my favorite mount mount car mount for anything. This is the Ram mount system. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. I don't, this is cool. I'm actually I'm using my rear view mirror to see the image. Uh, this is excellent. Uh, so yes, this is this is the Ram mount system uh, that I absolutely swear. So does that just have sticky back? Is that like a sticky backing? Uh, well. This right here is my own little modification. It's just the standard mounting pad with some Velcro on top of it. Uh -huh. uh, but the thing is, it's completely modular. So basically, this is component one, the, the big suction cup that sticks to anything and absolutely will not let go. Uh, the rocker arm right there. And then there's you can basically buy anything you want to stick to the end of it. Uh, ideally, you would probably go and buy a custom, an actual holder that they've developed specifically for the iPhone 4, uh, but I tend to put so many things in and out of this thing uh, that I just prefer to just put uh, a pad of Velcro uh, up there. Uh, but this is this is very this this does very much look like uh, 
you know, the Christmas message from uh, from Apollo Eight. <laughs> and now, now, that, now we've given you by 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 moving the the uh, camera around, we've given you some more clues of where Andy might actually be. So, uh, you know, in, in, me, possibly later in the show, we'll we'll show you a couple more examples. And the question is, can you find Andy by the end of the show? Clue number clue number one: You can hear a bell from here, but there's <laughs> not in a collar. Think on that. Let's hear some fog hat. All right. So the question is, is that um, what? I don't know. There wasn't a lot of news about Apple this week or yesterday. I mean, I, it's been it's been kind of a slow slow time. So I, you know, I guess I guess we we ought to go ahead and talk. Uh, you know, because no one else is talking about it. Uh, we might want to talk about the fact that Steve Jobs again is taking a leave of absence. I mean, this this is like this is like the president decided he was going to take a vacation. I mean, it was just everywhere yesterday. Uh, now, what one of the things that I I you know, Steve asked for his uh, asked for a little bit of privacy, and I, you know, I'm going to actually respect that and not get into too much of the medical uh, issues because we have no, we have no idea, we have no idea. I mean, first it was a pancreas, then it was a liver, then it was, a, we don't know if they were connected, and we don't know what it is. And I think that it makes sense to just kind of let that go. But what I think is important is, uh, you know, how do we think this is going to affect Apple? Apple's, and, and there's there's a couple things. There's, of course, there's the next year, but the next, you know, is if, if he takes a lot of time off uh, or decides that he needs to take, you know, the rest of the time off, uh, how does this affect Apple? Andy, Andy, what, do you, what are your thoughts uh, as we, as we kind of start going down this path? Uh, I really don't think it's going to affect Apple all that much. Uh, it bears repeating that, uh, you know, this, it's not that Steve Jobs invents everything that goes on at Apple. He's just, you know, the leader. He's he's communicated a pretty clear path of what he where he thinks Apple should go. Uh, they tend to hire people who don't disagree with that overall plan. The people who are up, uh, are up at the executive level understand exactly what kind of company Apple is and where they want to go. Uh, they've uh, the, the, the the Mr. Interim guy. I think that's 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 his actual street handle. Uh, Tim Cook is going to be. Uh, has, has been in this position before. He's he's ridden on that bus. So I think that there's going to be the expected sort of stock market blip. But I don't think that's really good. It's I think it's not a, it's not an accident that they made this announcement the day before Apple feel. I believe that Apple's going to give some extremely good news uh, in their earnings report today. And anybody who was stupid enough to sell at the first note of oh, Mr. Jobs is taking another leave, a medical leave, is going to say oh, I really wish I'd kept those stocks when they announced that they've made and that they that exceeded our earnings our earnings projections by eight point one billion dollars. Ooh, probably a bad move there. Well, and and, and related to that though is is so, uh, uh, Tom. The the question for you is a, as we start to go down this path. I mean, you you work in in where you're working with engineering and so on and so forth, and there's a certain trajectory that is going on but when does this start when does his absence start to really affect apple's trajectory do you think well it's when they release their first bad product is really what the problem is i mean what steve brings to you is the ability to say no mm -hmm. uh this isn't ready even though the schedule says it's ready and even though we have all these prototypes and they work as well as they do i don't like it yet and so that's really the founder can do that because He's, it's his money and, and his company, and he's authorized to do that. What you get is two, three, five, ten years even down the road when you have somebody else in there who doesn't really feel like it's their call. It's, well, the people that work for him's call, and they say it's ready, so it must be ready. That's when you stumble. Well, That's in some ways, isn't this, this is what one of the challenges was when Steve was gone the first time. So, we, you know, we saw incredible you know incredible products coming out of of apple and i'm talking about 1985 86 sure you know so we saw 10 years of apple growing and then steve was gone for 10 years and and what apple slowly devolved out of devolved into was it went from being this idealistic very um uh innovative company to one trying to be like pcs um that that didn't really serve uh what they needed is, is that a is that a risk for apple well it's always a risk uh, can a company, you know, survive uh, without its founders? And there's plenty of examples of companies that were doing just great, and then the founders left, and then they did much less well. And uh, well, I mean, some people, some would argue that, that that Redmond is a good example of of that issue. Well, yeah, and Hewlett Packard uh, is another example. Uh, uh, there's plenty of examples. Uh, Wendy's. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all throughout. And it, probably if you look at the stock market price, it's really just discounting that possibility that they will have problems years from now um, because it's not 
that they took a 50% hit or they think that the company isn't going to grow anymore. It's just that, well, everything is up and to the right uh, when the founder's at the helm and there is some risk, you know, in half a dozen years from now. Right. Andy, uh, is there an issue when you get into uh, the, the distortion, the Steve distortion field that that, uh, you know, he's able to make deals that is very difficult? And this is really the, 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 the situation with CEOs is beyond the engineering, beyond saying that that uh, Apple will continue to make great products. Can they continue to make these crazy deals that have been uh, part of what's required to kind of move uh, these ideas forward? Is there someone behind him? Is Tim Cook the guy that can do that? It, uh, uh, every every report that I've heard and every report that I've read about uh, says that Tim is absolutely a capable guy to do. Uh -oh. Is faced with that sort of thing and doesn't flinch uh, is the time that the precedent is going to be set. Uh, it's been pretty much, uh, uh, Steve pretty much firmly defined the fact Oh, and we oh. lost Andy. So, so we. Uh, so this is good. this might be a, a challenge that we uh, that we get into here. As I said, we're, Andy's connecting to us uh, mobily. Uh, we had we had some issues um, uh, earlier, and so we will, we'll uh, try to bring him back here in a second. Uh, Tom, the, the uh, while I bring him back, the the um, when do you think we talked about this a little bit? Is it year the next year? It, it would probably wouldn't matter whether Steve was there or not. Oh, they can, they can coast. And it also makes a really big difference if Steve is maybe not there day to day, but they feel his watchful eye over their shoulder. Uh, mm -hmm. Because to a large extent, you can just say to yourself, well, what would Steve do? And really understand that. And, and he's there to correct you, uh, although maybe not in real time, if there really is a problem. And so I think that well, for example, I always look at Apple products and I think about what Steve calls lickability, right? So is the product lickable? Well, I think he actually means that literally. So I think he means that you should be able to pick up an Apple product and there shouldn't be any spots on it where you would say, you know, if my tongue got in there, would that hurt? And so I think he means it literally and you can decide for yourself, you know, okay, well, there's this one little connector on the bottom here well, I don't think my tongue would hurt too much if I were to get it in there. And you can look around any Apple product and they'll, they'll have this, this characteristic. And right. so as long as he's around, at least in their hearts and minds, uh, that's fine. When you get somebody new in there who has new ideas of, well, I want to take the company in a different direction, that's your real problem. Right. So, uh, so you know, so, whoop, hello, Andy? Whoop, are you there? Hello? Okay, we heard a little. We we had a little uh, a pop there. Uh, so you know, okay. so it, it it seems that right now, obviously, we just don't know what's what's happening here. You know, I mean, we don't know uh, uh, whether it's going to be a long stay. Now, Andy, do you read anything into the fact that the last time he took a leave of absence, he said he was going to be back in June. This time, he's not saying when he's going to come back. Mm, not particularly. Um, again, that, that that's reading so far into the statement that I don't think that I, I want to talk about that. Uh, I do also just want to make sure it's also understood that the last time, since we brought it up, the last time that Steve took a leave of absence, it's not as though he went away for six months and then came back. Uh, he was just not that hands-on, into the office every day, having face-to-face -face meetings. He was still, uh, remember, this is this is a time when, uh, like, the iPad was a lot of the key decisions were being made about this. And so the iPad is still very much something that, something from, for lack of a better word, from the Steve Jobs era. So it, it goes a bit too far to assume that Steve is going to be out of the picture for the indefinite future, and now all the kids are trying to run the summer camp without any of the counselors uh, because they're, they're, very, they're very good at what they do. Plus, uh, if there's stuff that needs uh, Steve's input or Steve's approval, or just as likely Steve's giant size 13 iron boot to come down on the heel of somebody who says, yeah, well, we're, we will let you put this on our network so long as we can put our own version of our NAV app on your device. Yeah, you need that. That's when Steve comes into the conference call and says, you said what? You're asking for what? Uh, so I'm, it's not something that I think that we should be really reading into. 
Very good. All right. So so we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. We'll, obviously, we had to track it a little bit. I mean, this is Mac break and this is Apple. And uh, I don't think that there's any reason to dig into it any deeper because I don't think we have I think we're we've talked about as much as we can talk with the information that we have. Um, and uh, and I and I, I, you know, we hope that Steve gets better. I think that's the the bottom line is, is that uh, we all want Steve to um, to do well and, and come back and uh, and visit us soon. So uh, from 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 Steve World, and so uh, so hopefully that comes in now. Next in the news, uh, Verizon. Of course, we saw the announcement last week. So the uh, and everyone was excited that finally Verizon is supporting the iPhone. It's coming out uh, uh, February tenth. For if you if you don't already have Verizon, I believe February third. If you already have a Verizon account, uh, so you get a little bit of a head start there. Now, of course, after we've all looked at it and said this is just the same, you know, people are starting to dig into whether they should actually. They've got a little time to think about this, and they're wondering, is this the time for me to get? a uh, an, an iphone i've been waiting uh, or, or should i jump from at&t and we were kind of covering all of that live and, and and giving our input but now that we've had a week to think about it um andy what do you do you think that there is a is a certain people that should or shouldn't get the uh the new iphone uh i really don't think that it's locked into uh, i don't think it's locked into uh anything that's clear right now uh i think that if you're already on a verizon plan particularly if a lot of your family members are on a Verizon plan, big, big upside to getting uh, to, uh, to switching, excuse me, to buying a Verizon phone when the time becomes when you're off a of contract or if you've been waiting for it to come on to, to come off a of contract. Uh, I think that the real decision is not going to come until about a month or maybe even two months after the Verizon iPhone has been on the market where we can really do lots and lots of tests and crunch a lot of numbers about what the real actual performance is of the Verizon phones compared to the AT&T phones. Because for now, it's just been urban legend that AT&T is an inferior network and it's a terrible... Uh, it's at and T's. <laughs> okay, I, should, I shouldn't be talking about how good or bad the AT and T network is while I'm using Skype over the AT and T network. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but I'm saying there, that there's so some guy in there just goes, you know, I'm just going to flip that switch right now. You know, you know. <laughs> no, it's like, wouldn't it be great if we suddenly gave him like 4G coverage on the iPhone that we we're planning on giving giving away a couple of months? Uh, well, all, all I'm saying is that. Right now, it's just been you know urban legend that of course if 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 iPhone were on the Verizon network, it'd be eight times as fast and forty times as reliable because all the problems we've been having with connectivity have all been associated with AT and T. And in a way, Verizon's worst nightmare has come true. Now they have to actually put up or shut up. They're going to have iPhone hardware running on the Verizon network, and it could be that two months from now, when we have millions of things in the field, and it's possible to do a true apples to apples, oranges to oranges, side by side test. Uh, between the two hardware, we'll find out that there really isn't much of an advantage to being on the Verizon network. And then it's just going to come down to who's offering you the better deal. Uh, I've been an AT&T subscriber for several years. I've never felt as though I've really been uh, at the at the butt end of a rifle uh, with the, with their service plans. Uh, I've also been a Verizon customers, uh, customer, and I've often been reading a bill and saying, that must be a clerical error. There's no way they're charging me for that. I must be just stupid. I'm not. I'm not reading it. Uh, but for now, the only real. Uh, for now, the only decision you can make is that if you travel internationally, the AT&T phone is obviously going to be better because it's GSM based. Uh, if you need have, have need for a 3G mobile hotspot, uh, then obviously the Verizon phone will have a feature that the AT&T phone lacks, unless it turns out to be a, a sneak peek of a feature we're all going to be getting in 4.3. As I said, it really there's no need to go out and rush. If it were me, uh, and if I were unhappy with AT&T, and if I did not already have a grandfathered in uh, unlimited data plan <laughs> on my iPhone, I would be waiting a few months just to see what these what these things are really like out in the field. Also, so now one of the things that people have started to say, or in some of the press, has been talking about the fact that this is where. Apple may lose its ability to just blame AT and T for coverage issues, and so so the on on one side, you know, they're they're basically saying if there's coverage issues, if Verizon, the, the one that has the best coverage out there, uh, is um, the one, uh, you know, is, if it's, it's having trouble in drop calls, maybe this is the iPhone. Um, uh, conversely, though, the problem with that, of course, is that they've changed the antenna, so we now we don't know whether it's not an, it's not a, there's not going to be an apples to apples comparison between the Verizon iPhone and the AT and T iPhone because they're two different phones. I mean, they have two different antennas. Well, well, close close enough. All, all people are interested in is if I buy a Verizon phone, 
Will my connection be more reliable than it is on the AT&T network? Will I get more coverage in more areas? And will I get faster data speeds? They don't really care if it's a different uh, if it's a differently tuned antenna or not. Well, I don't think I don't think they care, but I think AT&T cares. You know, I think AT&T is going to if if suddenly okay, everyone gets good bandwidth, yeah. you might hear AT&T going, "Well, you know, they have a better antenna than we did. Apple didn't have a good antenna for there, and they've improved it for Verizon." Now on the the you know that, I mean that that might be you know part of that that argument there. Um, uh, also. You know, people could say if, if they have bad coverage, it could be the saying that the iPhone users are using this more heavily. You know, they're 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 starting to pound now. Now, uh, Tom, do you think that there's going to be a a solid uh, argument one way or the other as far as uh, you know coverage? Yeah, I think that the CDMA uh, modulation format is really a lot better than GSM for phone calls. Uh, so the the drop calls, I think aren't going to be nearly as much of a problem, particularly when you're moving. If you just have bad coverage and you're in a dead spot, uh, then it just depends on where the towers are relative. But the handoffs in GSM are much more difficult to do than CDMA. The CDMA phone broadcasts all the time, uh, and all the towers that are in range can hear you. And they're all listening and choosing the best signal. Whereas in, in GSM, you're in a little cell and you've got your little time slice, and then when you move to the next cell, your little time slice follows you to the next cell. And if the next cell is full, then you drop the call. Well, and this is one of the secrets behind Verizon's choice of CDMA, isn't it? I mean, that you need half as many cell towers to cover the same amount of area. Well, yeah, there's plenty of advantages of CDMA. And there's also the disadvantage of battery life. Uh, because the radio is on all the time instead of being pulsed, uh, it costs them in battery life. So... Uh, it's it's a trade-off between talk time and and reliability so if you if you talk a little bit or that is not for hours and you really care about not having dropped calls and you're on the move then cdma i think and and the uh, verizon are the clear choice now, now andy uh one of the other things of course and we're going to talk about this uh in a minute is there's a lot of rumors now starting to come out about the iphone 5 uh, you know, and, and the and the iPad. It, it, the other qu big question here is: is does it make sense? To, is this a stopgap? Does it make sense? It it really does look like we're going to get that update in the summer. Does it make sense to buy anything right now? No, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, I, I I can't understand how anybody would have a bug up their butt so big that they have to get the Verizon phone today 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 especially when every single year apple has announced a new phone in the summer uh, so that's just yet another checkbox in the decision to wait until the summer wait until the iphone 5 uh, apple will apple i promise you makes more than 300 of these uh, every year uh, so i assure you that if you have money to thrust into the, into the face of an apple store employee they'll be more than happy to swap that filthy lucre uh, for a shiny new iphone 5 on the network of your choice yeah. So, so it'll be, uh, so I think that that, you know, as we, as we start to look at it, I have to admit, like uh, uh, a couple of people have asked me and my, my response has been mostly that if you don't care about updates, like for instance, if you really held out for a long time and you were then ready to switch to the, to the CDMA and you don't care about having the newest phone or care about having the, those pieces and you really just want to finally just move on and get your iPhone, it makes sense if you're not trying to keep up with the, you know, with all the new technologies. But it seems like to me, if you do care about whatever extra features. I mean, an, an example is like my, my wife, her AT&T uh, uh, ends um, in, uh, uh, her AT&T contract ends in February. So it's almost exactly when this is all uh, going over. And I'm going to get her an iPhone 4. And the reason I'm going to get her an iPhone 4 is because she has, she only went to the 3GS because I gave her one. <laughs> you know, like she was in 3G, she was in 3D and she was very happy in 3G world. And then she, and then I moved her to 3GS and she has, she has one page, the one page that came with her, with her, her camera, I mean, with her, uh, with her iPhone. And then like two other little apps that I put on her, on her iPhone. So there's this whole thing about, you know, she doesn't, she just doesn't use it that heavily. And, and so, you know, and, and she uses a couple little things and every once in a while she goes, Oh, this is kind of cool. And, and she kind of likes using the calendar. Uh, but so for her moving her to the iPhone four right now, and if you have someone, if you're someone that's looking at that, then she, uh, you know, that would make sense, you know, and I wanted to have one because, you know, I want face, I just FaceTime and interaction, you know, all that stuff. And, and also if I get stuck using her phone, which occasionally happens, I get frustrated if it isn't an iPhone four. So, so the, um, uh, so anyway, the, uh, so I think that, you know, for those kind of people, my mom, you know, who, who is still using another, you know, she's on Verizon, uh, or my, even my dad, you know, they, they're not going to notice if there's yeah, all this, new, these new graphics and everything else. What were you going to say, Andy? I, I was just going to say, but, uh, 
I, I just keep coming back to the statement, what advantage does this person gain by getting it now instead of in three or four months? Uh, it, 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 especially if, if you want to toss in the idea that, well, they don't need these extra features, you can also toss in the feature, the, the, the suggestion that maybe in the summer the $200 iPhone 4 is going to become the $99 iPhone 4 and the iPhone 5 is going to be the $199 model. Right. I just, it, it's... it's Anybody it doesn't make sense. Psychology 101, this, this, this thing called delayed gratification. I can, you can have this whole bag of M&Ms in one hour, or you can have these five M&Ms right now. Which you know, one do you take? Well, you can know. I get the both world, best of both worlds? Can I just gazelle it when, I, when, I, when the new one comes <laughs> look out? Look at that. Look at that. that, that, that he's, he's seen me. I'm, I'm sitting there fiddling around with gazelle, and, of course, Tom just threw it right in there and, uh, and uh, passed me on to gazelle. And, of course, gazelle is one of our sponsors. We want to thank, uh, thank them. Uh, and, you know, that we have a great – if you guys haven't heard of Gazelle, um, you know, you should. Uh, it, is a, it is a great, great service. And, and the bottom line is, is a lot of us, uh, like me, uh, accumulate lots of electronics, and, uh, and then we need to get rid of them because we've got new electronics. And, and, uh, and, and that's the – you know, we go from a uh, – you know, from our old electronics to new electronics, and most of the time that just go – that goes – I have a big box full of that stuff that I'm kind of now getting ready. We did this a little bit at the office. Um, but the uh, but now I'm I'm really kind of focused on building my little box that's going to go to Gazelle because I just got to get rid of this stuff. I mean, it's old stuff. You keep on thinking that I'm going to go back and use it, um, but uh, you're not going to. So um, so you get more if you have the box and the manuals and all that. You do. So if you keep, uh, who who knew? Who knew? When I threw those threw those away, saying ah, I don't need these manuals. So you get. I don't know if you, the box and the manual, I don't know how much, but you definitely get more for it having it in good condition as well as having it be a, uh, you know, getting the power cords and all the, uh, all the little accessories and everything else. The more you get back to the complete piece, the more you're going to get for the, you know, for your, for your buyout. Now, the great thing is, is that you don't have to figure that out. You can go up to the webpage um, and simply select, uh, you know, just say, this is what I got, you know, so I can, uh, you know, go up here and uh, let's see if I can pop up to Gazelle real quickly here. But, um, I like to save the boxes and all the packaging, particularly the Apple stuff, because they have such beautiful packaging. You know, I, I think about doing that, and then I and then I don't. <laughs> you know, I, I the, the um, so here's Gazelle, and so I can go in here and say I have an iPhone 3GS, and let's say a 32 gig. All right, and is it? Uh, I have normal wear and tear. I have normal wear and tear. Let's say. Uh, slight wear, such as faint scratches, because I put it in my pocket, because that's what you do with phones. I have the AC adapter. I have the original cables. And, um, yes, it's free of water damage, <laughs> I think. I think. So my offer is 199 So that's actually, you know, if, if I'm going into a new, uh, if I'm looking at it, I can, for $190, I can get that. I can Im immediately get a new iPhone if I wanted to. Uh you know, but that's the, you know, that's the kind of thing you can decide as you're starting to figure out if you want to upgrade, if I want to get rid of, you know, if you want to get rid of any of this stuff, if you decided you're not using it. And the thing is, is if you've really decided you're not using it, the best time to get rid of it is as soon as you decide that, not uh, a year after you've decided it and it sat in a box. And so, you know, you know, you're going to get more money for it, but they're going to figure that all out. They'll let you, you know, you can, uh, they'll send you a little box, you put it in, you send it to them and, and it all works out. So if you've got these things and these are Xboxes, uh, PlayStations, Wii's, GPS devices, all these things that you, uh, you know, there's tons of categories, over 200,000 unique items um, that you could have uh, to make that work. Go to, go to gazelle.com. And uh, now you're going to get 5% more if you use MacBreak as the uh, as the coupon code, so um, so if you uh, so make sure to go and use use MacBreak uh, as the coupon code, and, and you'll get five percent more when you're when you're doing it. But if you've decided that you know you experimented with something that didn't really work, and now you can't send it back, um, you've had it for a while, and now you're replacing it. Uh, you know the payment method. You can decide whatever payment method you want. You can have a PayPal check um, or an Amazon or Walmart gift card. All of those things are possible, and it's just a great way to uh, keep stuff out of the recycling bin because that's where it's going to go for many of us. Um, so anyway, definitely check it out. Once again, gazelle.com and uh, make sure to use MacBreak as your coupon code so that you can uh, get your extra 5% on that and, um, you know, start recycling. Re you know, important. So how do they sell it? I, it's, it, I think it's, where does it go? I think it's in a land of not our problem. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, what if I wanted to buy a phone from Gazelle? I think selling? that you know, I think that they're supplying you know a whole lot of areas, and that's a good that's a good question that I don't have the answer to. Okay, um, but it, it is uh, you know they they find out where they're going to go. I mean, a lot of stuff like iPhones and stuff like that. I think they, they can you can send them overseas. You can do a lot of other things with them. So so I think that that's kind of how that that process works. But I, I uh, um, what I'm really glad about is it's just not here. You know, like I don't, I don't know where it is, but it's not in front of me. So now, now that we've said that, the one thing that the, the, the caveat that I that I will say is that, especially as the rumors that we're about to start talking about right now, I'm a big fan of. Even though I talked about you know people getting excited and buying this new Verizon, I strongly believe that we should, um, that it would be prudent to wait until um, the summer, uh, at least until June, to buy to buy a new phone. I think that we want to see the network. Um, sort itself out and see how well the network does. I think we don't want to put too much pressure on the network at first. And then I also think that, uh, you know, I think as, as you guys have, have both said as well, is that it's just, um, you know, there's no good reason. The iPhone, you know, you, here's the thing. I constantly am looking at like, what would I, else would I want with my iPhone? Or what else would I want for my iPad? And I just don't think, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to upgrade this year. And then the rumors begin. And then I find myself going from, I don't really need that to, oh, well, that would be kind of nice to, um, I think I'm going to need to start saving up money. So here's the, here, are the, here are some of the rumors that, are, that we're starting to see right now. Um, these are uh, what they're saying or what some people are saying, SGX543 uh, graphics um, into the, uh, the iPad 2 uh, and, and the iPhone 5, dual, uh, dual core. So the, and, and this would be required if, I mean, one of the other things that we're starting to see is, you know, HDMI out or possibly HDMI out, as well as these dual uh, multiple arm Cortex uh, A9 cores, uh, as well as a, the, the resolution on the iPad, I have to say, according to the rumors, is 2048 by 1536, which Andy, it sounds a little in the land of insanity. What? Yeah, the the usual explanation is that they have to make if they up the resolution, they can't just pick any resolution. They have to pick one that's going to be compatible with the current user interface and the current library of apps. Uh, I don't think it's I, I, it's that's on that's definitely on my I'll believe it when I see it list. Only because there's one feature that Apple absolutely has to achieve with the iPad 2, and that is 499. It has to still be a $499 tablet, or at least there has to be something in the price range that's $499. Uh, and I don't know how they can build a device that cheaply that will have that kind of a high-resolution display. Uh, so I don't. I, I don't. I also don't know how Apple would sell that as a big design, a big, a big reason to go for the iPad instead of. Uh, instead of an Android tablet that, that competes with it. None of the devices that were shown at CES uh, this month have anything like that kind of resolution. So I don't know why that anybody inside at Apple would be saying, we're going to go for this really, really much more expensive, much higher power uh, component, just so that we can say that our numbers are bigger than the other guy's numbers. Well, how, so how, how, I, high does it have to be, how high does it have to be to be called a retina display? Like, that's what they're going to want to do. Three, is, to, call, to call it a, to, if they want to be consistent, they'd have to make sure that it is magazine print quality. Uh, they have to be able to say that this is this the resolution of this display is higher than what the human eye can resolve. Okay, and uh, Tom, how, how, what resolution do you think that would be? Well, with my eyes, uh, <laughs> it's pretty easy. Yeah, yeah, that's so, it. I mean, I think that most of the other things that we've seen here look like they're pretty much what we would expect. So we would we would see the. Uh, uh, front-facing camera, the you know both two cameras on it. Uh, the high resolution. I think we're all expecting some increase in resolution. The, the only time I notice the resolution is when I'm trying to exactly position a pixel in Angry Birds. You know, for that exact <laughs> launch point. I think really that's the key. And I think these two processors may fix the stuttering problem in Angry Birds. Also, you know, I'm over Angry Birds. Okay. We talked about this before the show. I'm over it. I'm over Angry Birds because it's, it's stuttering. Thank you. What? It's dead to me. DTM. Dead to me. It's DTM. Dead to me. Because uh, the, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I started playing it and I finally just said, I just can't do this anymore. I can't, can't keep on playing because it, it screws up the, you know, when you get these really fine, uh, you know, things where you have to get the right, just the right pixel and then you have to hit it just right to get it to blow up or to split the little, little birds out. And I can't do that now because it's stuttering at the same time. So, um, need the iPhone 5. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I, I, I'm just glad that I'm not addicted to anything One right now. processor. For the physics engine and one for the graphics, should yeah. work perfectly the first time. Now, it, there, uh, I you could, know, so I, I could see, 
I, I just wanted to say that yep. I, I could see them increasing the resolution high enough that they can, they can boast that they that uh, the iPad 2 can display true a 720p HD video because that's something that will let them also advertise. And we've and who has the greatest library of 720p HD streaming video, uh, uh, downloadable titles? Why the iTunes Store, of course. Well, and and, and that's, that's the thing is is that do they need to really go to 1920 by 1080 to uh, pull that off? Because 1920 by 1080 is a big jump, and and the other thing is is it would have to be elongated, so it would be 1920 by 1080 or 19 1920 by 1200 to go closer to actually, you know, now you're getting close I don't, to. I, yeah, you just don't think I, they can. I, do I don't it. see them ever. I don't. Well, I don't see them ever going to that widescreen aspect ratio for the physical hardware, uh, because that's there. I've at this point I've used. Tablets that have that sort of widescreen form factor, that 16 by 9 HD, like just form factor, and I've used the iPad, and it's hard to explain why, but that slightly fatter screen just fits better as a tablet than that elongated kind. It seems as though there's more wasted space. It's it's perfectly suited for watching letter watching a HD video, but it's not perfectly suited for really dealing with any other kinds of content. Well, the other issue is expense, right? I mean, you know, you go from the, the 1024 by 768 as we got started is that that 1024 by 768 is a much less expensive uh, screen uh, to produce. Yeah. Although that now that once you once you start ordering them in units of 10 million, I bet you. Oh well. But, but I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear uh, part of what you were saying earlier. Uh, I think I, I don't think they can. They they have to necessarily have to go the full width of 720 uh, 720 uh, uh, HD. I think that it's good enough for them if they can simply say that we'll. If you really want HD, we've got a screen that's 720 pixels tall. We will cr we will cut off the sides of it, but you'll get full. T you'll, you'll get seven. You'll get 720. P resolution, and of course, if you really feel as though the left and the right side of Jimmy Kimmel Live are that important to the to the storytelling that he's trying to accomplish in his monologue, uh, then of course we will let you cry, we will let you zoom out a little bit and get the full with, with the screen. I think that if they were to do HD, they would do 720 with with some uh, window boxing. I'm not sure that they would do full widescreen with that kind of aspect ratio. It doesn't seem like it's it doesn't seem. Like more than 1280 by 720 would be really necessary on a screen that size. I mean, that's the, uh, you know, I look at, I'm watching 1280 by 720 on a 50-inch at home, um, and it looks fine. In fact, it, you know, I mean, it, that's, the, that, I mean that's, that's the reality is that unless you get close enough to it, um, you know, the, it's just the question is, are we really going to resolve it? And that would only be a small up, update. Now, one of the other things that they're rumoring is that using the new Qualcomm, or not new, but the Qualcomm chip to allow them to do CDMA and GSM at the same time. Tom, do you think that that's likely? Well, the the chip exists, and it's it looks like a fine chip. Uh, I don't think that you'd be able to do a single phone call with both CDMA and GSM, uh, hand off from one cell to another, although that would be cool. Uh, I think it's more about being compatible for international calls and that sort of thing. Well, and also being able to buy one phone and work anywhere. Well, sure, and only have one to provision and one to maintain uh, in all of their supply chain. That that helps quite a bit and can pay for quite a bit of silicon. Is there, Andy, do you think that that's a probability to uh, to see that? Uh, I do like the idea of them having a dual chip phone just for the simplicity of saying we can we can have one factory churning out uh, 10 million, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million copies of the same thing instead of having to keep the supply channel packed with two different kinds of phones. So here's so the, here's, if, if, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm just saying it, it might, it might actually cost less money for Apple to design one phone that goes on, on all networks than to maintain one team maintaining the CDMA phone and one team maintaining the GSM phone. Now here's the question I have for you, Andy. Uh, so Apple has done this, what I feel is kind of a rushed job on putting out uh, going onto the Verizon network. One possibility as you start looking at the iPhone 5 and, and having a CDMA GSM phone is that this could work on any network. Do you see a possibility that they gave Verizon an opportunity to jump in early and get some early sales? Because when the iPhone 5 comes out, they're going to announce that they're available now on T-Mobile and Sprint and, and um, Verizon and AT&T, and they're going out for everybody, uh, you know, starting in July. And, and the Verizon deal, while they get a better deal, greatly imp improves Apple's hand dealing with other cell providers. I think that Verizon was a very important get for them. 
Uh, no, uh, they, they remember that there are other GSM-based networks in the, in the country, and so if they really just wanted to broaden the map of coverage and give people an alter, alternative to AT&T, they could have done deals with just about anybody. Verizon was was a Tiffany get for them. They're, they're, if they have the Verizon network, they have now they have the two biggest and most serious uh, mobile networks in the country. So after they've gotten that the, the relationship with Verizon customers up and running. They might actually look at their numbers and decide that it doesn't. It's not even necessary for them to cut deals with other carriers right now. Uh, they'll also, I think, get some information about what it's like dealing with uh, dealing with a, a network that doesn't owe the company their lives. Uh, it's hard to remember right now, but a few years ago, AT and T was not the. They, 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 it's not like it was the Montel Williams show of uh, of networks compared to Oprah, but it was definitely. They, they needed they needed something as big and important as the iPhone to really compete and be head and shoulders alongside Verizon in the, in the coming three or four or five years. So Apple was able to kind of slap AT and T around as much as they wanted. Now they're dealing with a carrier that has more expectations from Apple than Apple has of them, and so that might be a new set of uh, how to win friends and influence people lessons for Apple. No, Tom, do you I, think so that... to answer your question, I don't think I, I, I don't think necessarily we're going to see more carriers in, in the summer. Tom, do you think that the, that the Android is forcing Apple to continue to open this to make sure that they're not leaving any of the table, you know, available, or as little of the table available? Because an Android is is selling more. I mean, more, there are more Androids now, you know, selling than you know from the from that from a platform perspective than iPhones. Uh, does Apple? Do you think Apple is still risking having uh, you know losing having the next Windows? Well, certainly, if you're a Verizon customer and you want a smartphone, uh, you, if you are only choice is an Android, you're going to get an Android. And if you have the choice of an iPhone, you'll probably get an iPhone because uh, their brand is so powerful. Um, mm -hmm. I would expect them to do probably the same percentage of, of iPhone sales on Verizon that they do on AT&T and uh, on other networks. So it's probably 20 million phones this year on Verizon. And, um, and that'll probably ramp up to 60 million uh, customers over time. So yeah, I think they're going to have a huge. They're going to have huge numbers, and and you're going to see people pulling their phones out and comparing who has coverage. And I think that the Verizon is going to uh, uh, sell a lot that way. Right. Right. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how this now, all now Verizon now uh, comparing it to an Android. You know, the A B cell phone comparison tests are always interesting. Because as we found with the iPhone, even, you know, I have five bars and you have one bar. We have the same right. phone. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's you know, and, and, and I still think that there are a lot of reasons that I want to have an Android. You know, I haven't committed to one yet, <laughs> but but there are a lot of customizations and so on and so forth. Right. That I, I want to write code for it and not have to deal with Apple. Yeah. And that, I think that's the big thing. And I still think that for the folks that are a little bit more techie and before, but I think that there were people who wanted a smartphone that didn't want AT&T enough that Apple was giving up a lot of sales in that area. And I think giving up important ground as far as development. You know, the thing is, is that it's not just how many sales and leaving money on the table. It's also as you have more users, it means more developers are developing for it and, and so on and so forth. And so that, um, you know, changes Apple's uh, structure. So I think that that's the, one of the things that they have to think about. So, um, so anyway, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Now, before we, uh, we've got some stuff to talk about with the iOS and the Mac app store uh, and a couple other things here. And they're coming up right, right after this. Um, but first, I want to thank uh, Ford. Uh, Ford, of course, uh, is a has been a sponsor for quite some time of Twit uh, at this point, and and a Mac break, and uh, and Ford. Um, you know, I am. I have to admit, I'm getting pretty pretty darn excited about the the Ford uh, Focus Electric. Uh, I have committed myself. I think I've talked about this that I'm not buying another gas guzzler. I'm not buying one. I'm not buying it. You know, and, and I. Uh, uh, I've decided that that's pretty much, you know, the direction that I'm going. I'm waiting. I was looking at the Leaf. I don't want anything that has a gas tank in it. Like, that's kind of my, you know, my, my whole thing is I don't want, it's not just that I want an electric car. I don't want a gas tank in it. I don't like the smell. I just don't like, I don't like the stuff. I don't want to have to stop randomly. And I, I'm very good at managing batteries. So, uh, you know, like I, I'm very good at charging and, uh, and I'm just really, really excited about the two, 2012 Ford Focus Electric. Um, and of course it has the voice activated sync and the, with uh, my touch that Ford, that all these Ford vehicles are coming out with. Um, it's powered by a lithium ion battery, high voltage capacity, um, 120 volt or 240 volt, uh, 240 volt um, upgrade uh, that you can get. And uh, so you can have that installed to speed up the, uh, the charge. 
Um, and it's, it's going to, you know, we think that it's going to offer uh, more miles per charge and be very competitive with any of the, of the electric cars that are out there. So um, it's going to be uh, interesting. And, and of course, as gas becomes more expensive, and it will, uh, and, uh, and as electricity, you know, continues to centralize, I think that it's going to be less expensive to run this. Uh, I'm not, as I said, for me, it's mostly just knowing that I've got something clean and I can control. I don't have to leave the house to get it ready to go. Um, I don't, you know, most people, I think when you think about it, you go, oh, I don't want to be caught without it. And, and I'm not, I think in the next 10 years, we want to have a, uh, I think in the next 10 years, you're, you're going to want to have a gas car available. So it's not like my, my only car will be a necessary electric, but the, uh, but as I look at new cars, um, you know, for the long trips, I might go out there, but most of the time I, I, I thought about the last month, how many times have I driven more than 80 miles, you know, round trip. And it was uh, once, <laughs> you know, so, so that, that, you know, that, that's when I started really thinking about it, just that, that I don't use it that way. And so, uh, of course, uh, with the Ford Sync, you get battery management, entertainment, climate control, uh, phone and navigation. Um, you can easily make calls. You can, um, you know, play music. You can see where your battery's at. You can do all of those things. It understands 10,000 voice commands uh, total. So you can really um, keep track of everything and keep your hands on the wheel, keep your eyes on the road and still do the things that we all want to do while we're driving, but shouldn't. So um, definitely check that out. We want to also thank Ford, of course, for supporting the special coverage of CES uh, 2011, uh, which was uh, turned out very, very well. And um, definitely check out uh, Ford Focus if you want to go, if you want to see, find out more about the Ford Focus, go to Ford, I, I'm sorry, go to focuselectricpower.com. Uh, you know, I think this is going to be something that we're going to see uh, happen dramatically uh, over the next 10 years is, is moving to electric. So this is um, what we're starting to see a lot more of. Um, and uh, but but you want to definitely check it out, whether it's this one immediately or not. You definitely want to check out uh, Ford Focus Electric Power dot com. Uh, it makes a huge difference from a energy security perspective, as well as just the fact that it's cleaner, um, because, you know, you really, uh, as we start to centralize our power, it makes it easier for us to make changes, you know, so we're not, you know, as long as it's hydrogen or gas or whatever, it's always going to be, uh, how do we change 10 million gas stations rather than how do we change a much fewer number of, of power stations? So, um, once again, check it out, Ford Electric, I'm sorry, focuselectricpower.com. So anyway, uh, now here is, a. Uh, Here's a crazy thing. We call it iTunes. So, uh, you know, we have, you know, of course it's called iTunes, but uh, we are moving towards a, a future, a future coming up very, very quickly where the app store, the app store is selling more. I mean, they're, they're selling more applications than they are music on, um, you know, from within iTunes or from the app store, you know, from uh, um, the app store within your, um, within your iPhone on the iOS. So Andy, Andy, uh, do you think we can keep on calling it iTunes if we're selling mostly applications? I think that there's a change is going to come. Uh, if, if as soon as Apple figures out a way, it's, 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 it's sort of the reason why the iPod was originally called the iPod and not the iPlay, uh, because I think there was all, there's always going to be that long range plan that it's going to be things for other than just music. And I think we're going to see a similar sort of name change for iTunes later on. I think it's, uh, unless unless Apple is okay with the idea of having the App Store and the iOS App Store and the Music Store and the iTunes Book the, and the iBook Store, uh, I think I think that Apple is uh, hurriedly. I, I think the, one of the, the top projects for Apple's team of lawyers is to get the, the rights of the name iStore uh, once and for all. Who uh, has iStore? From the I have no idea. I, I I have a feeling that whoever has it, whoever whoever just like. This, whoever, whatever college student in 1996 decided that he's just going to go for broke, spend eighty dollars registering ten domains. Uh, if he registered iStore, he's going to be a very wealthy man sometime <laughs> in the next in the next eighteen months. Just just some numbers here. Uh, Apple, uh, the it, it took sixty seven months. So just over five years to get to 10 billion songs. Uh, it has taken the App Store uh, to get to the same mark, 31 uh, months. So uh, faster than twice as fast uh, to get to the same number. So it is uh, moving very quickly uh, down that path. Uh, the, um, you know, as we, as we look at this, I, I remember back when we were talking about a Apple needs to make sure that they let third-party developers develop apps in the first place. Do you think that this was always the plan, Tom? I don't know. Do you think that they accidentally kind of fell into it? Well, I think they accidentally fell into apps. They they started off with a web browser. 
uh, and then found that they couldn't really deliver the experience um, that people wanted with it. And so now selling apps, I think, uh, it, well, it's been so successful that why wouldn't you reproduce that in every other area of your business where it could apply? So I, had a, I have a question for you, actually. Uh, so, Andy, with the uh, I find myself now, as I have more, I mean, I have hundreds of apps now. I mean, I buy them like little chiclets. Um, you're like, oh, that looks kind of cool. And they're, they're cheap and they're easy and, and, uh, and they're fun to use. The, the question is, is that now though I see apps and if they do a lot of different things, so like this kind of, uh, you know, a uh, whole toolbox of apps, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like you're thinking about too many things here. I just want a little app that does this with my photos, or I just want a little app that does this communication. Are we changing the way that we think about, uh, what we buy? Uh, do we want them to be more simple as we keep on going down this kind of iOS uh, path? That's definitely going to be a complaint. Uh, I, there's, a, there's a conversation that I keep having with uh, iOS developers, and it's starting to slop over a little bit into desktop apps, where uh, they ask me, they, they, they'll show me something they're working on, and they'll tentatively ask, well, how much do you think that someone would be willing to pay for this? And I always have to say... I won't tell you what your app is worth. I'll tell you what people will be willing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you, uh, it's it's over the phone, but I can I can hear their face go ashen when I say nine ninety nine, uh, because people are just not programmed to spend fifty dollars for an app that's worth eighty dollars. Uh, they it's not that they're cheap. It's not that they're irrational. It's just that they've been sort of conditioned to uh, they're, they're, they're more safeguards against that click purchase uh, when you get above 999 they're willing to they're willing to spend forty dollars uh, for a good productivity app a good getting things done app but at that point they're not going to simply say oh what the hell I'll, it's worth a try I'll go try it and see if it li I like it that's the point at which they dump out of the uh, the iTunes store uh, and start looking for recommendations start looking for videos and stuff like that uh, it's appropriate for iOS apps to be unit taskers by nature because uh, by you know, by their very nature, uh, the iPad here and the and the iPhone, they're not designed to be multi-pane, keep four tasks going at the same time sort of things. The best apps are the ones that, if they do a hundred things, they uh, the app at least maintains an awareness of where you are in the process and what you need to do and what you don't need to see. Uh, however, the one of the risks that I've been a little bit thinking about uh, with the migration to the app store is if that sort of mentality, both the pricing structure and the unitasking sort of philosophy were to suddenly start to infect the desktops. And there's no reason for, uh, there's, there's always a good reason to have well-designed streamlined apps, but I don't necessarily need to have a word processor that never has more than three buttons on it at any, any one given time. I don't want to necessarily have to launch a separate app to print something. That's kind of a nasty you know, nastiness for me. Didn't, uh, didn't, we, but, see, didn't uh, we see a lot of this uh, when in the early development for, uh, tour, like, Rhapsody? You know, back, back in the day, there was a lot of talk about, you know, docking a whole bunch of, of little applets together to, to, to form an experience yeah. rather than... That was that was uh, uh, most. I think you're talking about the Open Doc model, mm -hmm. where they thought that, that you essentially have something that was sort of a precursor to a web browser that would be a container for live objects. Unfortunately, people like to have a curated experience. People like to have someone who's smarter than they are at application development tell them, "Here is how you should have a photo app running." Uh, not uh, if, if freedom is a nice thing, but. I, don't, I want to have the freedom to let somebody else do that work for me. I just want to get this, these pictures uh, off my camera and, and, and onto a website and up to my, uh, up to my, my Aunt Rudy. Uh, I, don't have, I want to have to build that myself. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I just find it interesting because I, I, uh, I just noticed that myself becoming more sensitive. I know that my, my pain number is about between $3.99 and $4.99. That Somewhere in that range, I start going, hmm. Like if someone sends me... Uh, something that I'm remotely interested in. You know, I get a lot of email. I'm about to get a lot more more email now that I just said this. But, <laughs> like, if, if someone sends me a thing like, hey, I just created a new app and everything else, and I'm remotely interested in it, I tend not to... Uh, use the, use the coupon code. Like if it's a, if it's ninety nine cents or a buck ninety nine, and it's in the vicinity of of something that I think would be interesting, I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just get that, and it's just you know I'll just kind of run through it. If it gets more than that, I go, mm, I think someone's gonna you know I'm not so sure uh, whether I'm ready to just jump onto this. And once we get to nine ninety nine, it better be like I get kind of bitter. I, I think that's the difference is is that at at three ninety nine and below, I'm in this thing. I buy it. It was the price of a cup of coffee. If it doesn't work, I guess kind of go, eh, you know, and I move on and I, 
make sure that it doesn't sync with any of my other devices anymore. Um, but at, at nine ninety nine, I find that my that I um, if it doesn't work, I get kind of I get salty. Tom, yeah, somewhere between ten and twenty dollars for me. I I start researching things carefully, uh, and it, sometimes it, it's more based on uh, how well I want it to work. You know, if it looks mm -hmm. like a really good idea and I just want it to be successful, so maybe they will continue to improve it, um, then I've had really good luck. Right. And, and, and there's some things that have been more expensive. Like, for instance, Elements. Is, someone was just asking on the, on the forums about Elements, uh, Hermes. Uh, and I got Elements. I don't really use it. But it's great to show. Like I got my fourteen ninety nine because everyone says, "What what what can you do with an iPad?" I was like, "Well, look what it's going to do to education." And I pop this thing open and I spin I spin some stuff around and everyone goes, "Ooh ah!" And I've done that, you know, <laughs> for the eight thousandth time. Uh, it uh, you know it 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 proves the point. But uh, now, Andy, where is where's your where's your uh, pain point? Uh, I wouldn't call it a pain point. For uh, I will buy almost anything that seems interesting and has good screenshots for less than five bucks. At nine ninety nine, if I flip through them and I if I flip through them and see a good video of its features for nine ninety nine, if it's a if it's something that I can really get use out of, then maybe I'll I'll still pull the trigger. Above nine ninety nine, I don't think that's too much to to ask for a professional app. But I suddenly start to evaluate it as a professional app. I will have very high expectations. I'm not going to be in the front row of the of the, of the middle. School. It's, 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 so so we we all have these experiences, the three of us together, about oh that's you worked so hard on it. I could see you tried really hard. Guess who's being taken to Baskin Robbins after the performance tonight? Uh, and that's sometimes what I do when there's a 2.99 app that that's eh, a little bit ropey, but it works okay. I just like it. I want to see it continue to be developed. But once uh, once an app is like 25 bucks, 30 dollars, 40 dollars, wow! You really have to convince me that this is a great app. Given that I can't, I, I probably can't download a demo version of it. Given that, uh, uh, given that I can't get a refund if it doesn't really work out. That's honestly that's the reason why a lot of these uh, getting things done apps, so these uh, pr personal productivity apps, are untested by me because I just can't spend fifty dollars on an app that comes with an entire philosophy behind it that, according to four out of ten comments, I may or may not get. Uh, I, I just can't take that kind of risk, uh, especially in the terms that the App Store offers you. Do you think the free versions work? I mean, the the kind of there's like a free version and a pro version. Do you think that's a that is as close to demo as you need to be? I think that's a, I think that it's a necessity. You need to be able to expose some of the functions of the program to somebody for zero or ninety nine cents or just uh, close to free. If you're not going to do that, you really have to budget a lot of your development time to here is the two hours a day I'm going to spend building videos that clearly walk people through a task. Uh, with this app. It doesn't matter if it's a photo editing app. It doesn't matter if it's a word processor. It doesn't ma matter if it's a simple printing app. I, I need to see something living and breathing in front of me before I'm going to pull the trigger uh, on a $15, $20, $30 purchase. Well, and that also affects a lot. Of, I think a lot of times when we see reviews of apps on the, on the iPhone store, or on, the, on, the, on the app store, is that is the, the more you charge for it, the, the rougher people get about your, about, and there, it, to me, there seems to be like a no man's land between $5 and $30. So when you charge more than $30, we're assuming that you, you know, put a lot of work into it, and, and it's also a much more vertical market. So it's a much more it's a market that is they tend to understand that this is for yeah. my industry, and it's not really for everybody, and and it really works well. Um, and then if it's below five dollars, they're like, well, he tried hard. You know, we'll take him to Baskin Robbins. Yeah. And um, and the uh, uh, but in between that is this this kind of uncomfortable thing. I think the other thing that's interesting about the culture, though, in the app store is the is the fact that I I. How many free apps do we get? If it's not a big company putting out a free app where I understand where they're coming from, um, a lot of times I kind of look sideways at, 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 at the completely free apps, um, afraid that they're not, you know, there's just not enough put into them that they're going to they're gonna work unless they're part of a pro version or, 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 or they're part of a big company that you know is doing promotion. Yeah. There's, there's, there's something about a free app. Oh, I'm sorry, Tom. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, free is great when, when it has a pro version because what I've noticed is the free apps tend to have ads. Yeah, uh, and I, I'm sensitive to that sort of thing. I don't want to see an ad when I'm trying to do something. So I want to see a pro version that has no ads. And then uh, the free version is a great way to decide if I want to buy that. Right, right. Andy, yeah, I, uh, can, I, can, I just get... 
Go ahead. I, I just get a little. I just get a little. This is the world that we live in today. I get a little bit suspicious if someone offers me what looks like a very free, a very good and useful app, and it's free. Uh, I look at it and I think. You're making money off of this somehow. <laughs> what kind of data are you transmitting to God knows where to sell it to God knows whom just so that I can find I can calculate the hyperfocal distance for my camera? Uh, yeah. Yikes. Yeah. I mean, the, another thing we might be fighting here is that the uh, the the iPhone uh, certainly and the iPod iPad maybe they're not they're not like uh, notebook computers. See, they're not designed so that you're gonna. Plock down on the t- plock it down on the table uh, and spend four or five hours working on a project on your iPad. It's designed to be something you dip into, and it, it certainly can help you spend two or three hours writing an article or doing something like that. But it's not designed for that, so it tends to resist those kinds of massive uh, massive apps that are designed to be the best word processor in the world or the best uh, financial uh, analysis program in the world. They are designed to give you these wonderful 10 to 30 minute experiences. I think that's what developers are fighting against when they try to uh, charge $30 for an app that, uh, as I keep saying, might even be worth $50. It's hard to say that this is the 10, this is, this is only going to be used 10 minutes at a time, but boy, is, will you be able to get a lot done in those 10 minutes. Now, speaking of app stores, uh, of course, we have a Mac app store now. And uh, the, uh, one of the things that I, and I can't, I haven't gotten clearance to say who and who, but I've been talking to a couple of developers and uh, the numbers I'm hearing are 25, uh, 40% increases up to 80% increases in sales since the Mac app store. Now, the, these are all apps that were less than $50 and they're, they're just seeing huge spikes in, in purchasing um, based on uh, you know, as the Mac App Store came out, suddenly they're just seeing all these these um, uh, purchases. Is this just people experimenting with the the thing, or is it an easier way to to buy? Well, it turns out it's a really easy way to buy apps, whether you like it or not, right, Tom? It's a little too easy to buy apps. It turns out uh, if you go and download a free app, you need to put in your password to do that, uh, and you know you get the bill from the Apple Store for zero dollars and zero cents. But once you have your password in, until it expires, it turns out that if you just accidentally click on any of the prices in the store, and there are a lot of price tags in that store, uh, the little app jumps right out of the app store and it jumps onto your dock and a beautiful and there you have it. parabolic swoop, and you just spent $40. <laughs> which, you, which you have. Which I, which I did last night. And, Not uh, that you're bitter. Well... Uh, so then I looked into, well, how do you get your money back from the app store? And it turns out there's uh, a trick to that. Uh, you file a complaint and they get back to you. And so I'm waiting to hear back. They say it may take up to five days, um, to figure out whether or not I get my 39.99 back for an app that I accidentally bought that I already own. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and it's, 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 it's interesting. You know, I think that that, that is a, I, I accidentally bought um, an app. It turned out to be free, but when I clicked on it, it was like, boom, it was like, whoa, you know, because yeah. you used to with the it's iPhone. quick on the trigger. I actually, so I used to complain a lot about the iPhone uh, always requiring me, every time I bought something, requiring me to put in a, my passcode. Uh, you know, like I had to right. always put that. I was like, oh my, uh, uh, uh. And, and, uh, and I was like, why can't, once I do it, why can't they just get it? And I think this is what they've done. Is so people like me were complaining and saying, you should just be able to order it. But when I when my son has my iPhone or my or, you know my my three year old son has is running around with my iPhone or my iPad he's gotten really good at getting to the App Store. Now he's really good at getting to YouTube. He's really good at getting to the App Store. And and you can I've seen him many times run into that that wall uh, of uh, you know wait wait for your passcode. And fortunately he hasn't figured out the hash that I'm using for him. <laughs> my older daughter has. Like I, I I thought I was like oh that's a hash I'll never get it. And then she told me what it was and I was like okay never mind. So anyway, so I have now, now I had to change it. So Andy, uh, do you think that this is a problem that Apple needs to address? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I don't think they're going to address it until it becomes a big enough issue, until they get enough calm, rational Internet people uh, uh, painting, painting a simple and, and non-adversarial picture of how they quite innocently and accidentally uh, made purchases they didn't intend, because uh, that, that is a problem. That is, that is a big kick in the gut. Uh, when you realize that, uh, especially those of, those of us who have uh, uh, are on MacBooks, we've turned uh, tap to click on uh, on our trackpads. 
that is a believe me, I never ever mouse so carefully as I do as when I'm inside the App Store app. So I, this I, is not I this is not like my, accidentally spending two or three dollars now. I mean, now we're talking about apps that yeah, cost exactly. real money. Yeah. So I think that by the end of the year, we're going to see some sort of solution. Like maybe uh, the, I, I don't know how they would do it though, uh, and I don't know how they would do it without seriously changing the infrastructure of how apps get installed because it takes all of what. 20 seconds for an app to download and get installed. How does the app store manager successfully, if, if, if there's, if it gives you a 30 minute grace period to say, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, that's That's something that people are immediately going to abuse. Uh, even if you just give people a two minute window, give them, give them a few, give them like a little, uh, a, a moment to realize what they've just done. And then, holy crap, that's actually a $50 app or a hundred dollar app. But well, I, it, I, I need to undo that. that that's a, that's a two-minute window in which no good next can figure out. I bet there's a way that I can keep a copy of this app. I'll just make a backup of this receipt, or I'll, I'll write a script that simply looks in the receipts folder to make sure that before the app store deletes it and undoes my purchase, I'll get that back. Well, isn't it? But isn't aren't you in an issue? For me, it would just be enough to say, "Are you sure you really?" I just need another button that says, "Are you sure you really want to buy this app?" Like yeah. that's the whole thing is that there's just no it's just automatically running to the to the app and I get the one click uh, experience. But to me, all I need is is just to, when I accidentally click on something going, you're going to about to spend forty nine ninety nine. Are you sure you want to do this? Yeah, I thought Amazon had a patent on one click purchasing. I think Apple is actually paying them for it. Oh, okay. I think that that was part of the I think Apple pays. Now Amazon. they have to get their money's worth. I think they're getting their money's worth out of. <laughs> yeah, I, I, Apple. I, I, I think uh, I want two click. Purchasing. I, I I actually you know and oh, I I've oh. never turned that on in Amazon. I haven't either because I'm terrified that I'll order the wrong thing. You know, and I'll, I order I'll lots of things. Go ahead. I'll admit that your idea is a lot easier to implement than mine. Yes, I think, <laughs> I, think I think at least at least an option. Just just so there's so much of the even in the iTunes store where it will say, okay, you're about to purchase this iOS app. Are you sure you want to make this purchase? And then there's a checkbox saying. Don't have warn me about such things ever again. Yeah, you, yeah, so, yeah. I think that's. I think that's, that's, that's all that they would need to do to make we'll that real soon. to make us all happy. Finally, before we're about to get to our picks of the week, and we're about to get to our audible pick of the week that Andy's going to share with us. Uh, one more little piece of news that we probably should have talked about earlier, but it's been bouncing back up because, of course, we're talking about financials with Apple. Is Apple's cash uh, stockpile? So a Apple is sitting on fifty billion, not million, billion <laughs> of dollars. Uh, uh, and uh, they are, and the, there's a lot of argument there. Their investors are arguing that uh, that they should be giving that back to the investors because the investors evidently have not been getting a very good return from their Apple stock. Because you know the problem is is that Apple stock has been has uh, you know really just been flat. It's been very flat. You know, I mean, it just doesn't make a lot of no. I mean, the thing is, is it's going up pretty fast. But of course, everyone's concerned that what if Apple doesn't continue to grow the way it, that it's growing? Is this going to be? Uh, you know, we want to get our money now. And you know, uh, Andy, do you, do you think that they have a valid point as investors? Not really, because uh, Apple Apple is not the sort of company that just gives. They're not the, they're not the sort of company that returns profits by simply by uh, by. Uh, uh, by making sure they don't have lots of cash on hand, they make profits by not only funding a lot of projects that go nowhere for now, but also by seeing a great solution in a small company out there and just buying that company and absorbing all that talent and all those patents. Uh, so uh, they they they're a company that really needs a fat war chest. Uh, and I, if, it's, it's, remember that this is an investment community that would say we set a target. For, we set a target of Apple for of a thousand dollars per share, and it under for, underperformed by five hundred and fifty dollars. This stock yeah. sucks. Yeah. It's no matter how profitable they are. In a lot of companies, Apple size. I mean, Microsoft was was pushed into this earlier, and I don't think necessarily to their advantage. Uh, they were pushed into the idea of sharing a big chunk of their of their billions uh, with their investors. Tom, do you think that Apple's going to cave? No, I don't, I don't think so. Uh, they need to have a, a pretty big pile of cash around just because they're such a big hardware company. Mm -hmm. um, you save you a lot of money make doing 10 million that. of something and you figure out the part cost is a well, hundred dollars or something. Uh, it, it turns out you need a $10 billion lying around just to do a production <laughs> ramp. And so, uh, it, they have a legitimate need for it. The concern of course of the investors is that it makes you a takeover target because somebody will figure out how to borrow enough money to uh, to buy all that stock and then they just have to pay the interest on that money and they'll pay it with the cash that you have in your company and so that's 
That's what you try to avoid. That's what you're trying to avoid. And currently, yeah. though, the problem is, is Apple's problem is the second most expensive company in the world. Right. And I, I don't really see Apple as a takeover target. <laughs> and so, yeah, um, not, not so I, much. I don't think they have that concern. So I think the investors are, are not going to get their money today. <laughs> so yeah, I just think it's absurd. That's all. I'm not going to say anything else. I don't think I need to say anything else about it. It's it, it, it's kind of like if you want if you want your return, then sell your stock. You know, I mean, I, you know the uh, you know just and, and move on. I I, I I every time I see this, I'm I, all I can say is what a bunch. Wait, here we go. Of whiners. <laughs> I had to cut right to the what a bunch of whiners. You know. Anyway, so that's that's all. I mean, it, the thing is, I think that they're saving up to buy. Um, the U.S. government, which I think is going to actually be a lot cheaper soon, so I think that you know, then and then we could just have Apple everywhere. I mean, I think that, that I think that is a great uh, expenditure for for Apple to, to really be thinking about. For I bet you, I bet you Apple wasn't thinking that angle, but I'm telling you, or maybe a smaller tr- country, a smaller uh, a smaller country, maybe yeah, exactly. I mean, you could you could afford. There's a lot. It turns out that that fifty billion dollars could buy you like two thirds of the countries in the world. You know, so I mean, you know, if they if they were for sale, I mean, it, you you'd be able to. It's like bigger than the gross domestic product for most of these company countries. So, uh, so anyway, and then, yeah, the Chinese, I don't think they're going to sell, but you know, possibly I'm not going to, if I start throwing out countries, then we're going to get lots of complaints. <laughs> so, um, a possible takeover targets, uh, by Apple, you um, want a very pretty one. I think it, it would be important. If you're going to get one, it has to be very shiny and pretty. Like, if, if Apple was going to buy one, I would say, like, Luxembourg or... It's just what I was thinking. Were you thinking Luxembourg? <laughs> I was thinking Luxembourg. That would be one I bet you they could afford. You know, Switzerland eh, might be a little close, but but it would be very, sh- you know, very clean. I think that that would be a, a really good addition to the Apple, uh, you know, group of, of products. Um, you could, you know, and then, and then if you owned an iPhone, you could just visit that country for free. You'd be a citizen automatically. No, they probably charge you, but there'd be, but there, yeah. but the hotels and the and 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 you could just go. You, there'd be an app for everything. Oh, currency. The currency would be Me. all managed through the phone. Exactly. Well, they could do that in the U.S. Of course, that's too. probably coming too. Of course, that's already done in Japan, right? You buy things with the phone. <laughs> right. So uh, anyway, so now that we've ended our absurdity uh, related to that, uh, we, we, we answered absurdity with absurdity. We'd like to thank Audible, of course. Audible is um, the uh, you know, it's Audible. It is the best way to uh, to read a book. In my opinion, uh, don't don't bother. I mean, I, I we've talked about this. Uh, you know, my I watch fiction. I I download Kindle apps actually most of the time for technical manuals that I want to go through, um, and I uh, but I listen to everything else. You know, that's pretty much, and I listen to it on Audible. And I mean, I have I just have, and what I love is I have a huge library sitting on my iPhone. So whatever I'm in the mood for or listening through. Um, uh, uh, you know, I can I can listen to it. It is you know they have more than seventy five thousand downloads, so it doesn't matter. I mean, th- you know, whatever you're interested in, there's going to be the, the, this. You know, it's going to be available, and um, and so it, you definitely want to check it out. Uh, Audible.com, um, and of course the uh, it's Audible.com/slash MacBreak. By the way, go to Audible.com/slash MacBreak, and you can get a free book. And if you're thinking about a free book, um, usually at about this part of the show, Andy, you know, might possibly have a suggestion. Yes, well, it's this, this is this is part of my my plan of why I chose uh, to do Mac break from my car uh, for this exact uh, for this exact uh, Audible pick because uh, usually where uh, usually uh, I go through a lot of Audible books uh, and because uh, I, I do a lot of driving and so this is where I burn through most of uh, my my audio books uh, right here with the car with the uh, iPhone and the car mount uh, and uh, back when I was doing about. <laughs> Uh, t- uh, three, three hours of driving four uh, five times a week. Uh, believe me, it, it takes. I was on the gold plan, and boy, it doesn't take long to get through a twelve-hour audio book. Uh, and boy, are you gl- grateful uh, for that kind of entertainment. Um, the, my pick of the week is a, my, the latest book I just downloaded about three days ago. Uh, I realize that I'm not necessarily in a rut by always picking historical books and, uh, and nonfiction, but it's been a while since I picked a novel. Uh, uh, so I decided to split the difference. Uh, so my pick of the week is Sideways, which is the novel that the movie uh, with uh, uh, Paul Giamatti was uh, uh, was uh, was based on a few years ago. Uh, and so it's some of my favorite uh, Audible books are these books that later on became movies because it is just like it's 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 not terribly legal uh, to watch movies while you're driving. However, 
Uh, when you listen to the audiobook version of that book, you actually get a lot of the same experience, especially if you've listened to that movie before. And also because the movie was uh, it's a hundred the movie is a hundred and ten hundred twenty page screenplay adapted but from a four hundred to five hundred page novel, and so it's lots of extra texture, lots of extra moments, lots of extra explanation for what makes a character tick and why they were in a certain situation. And that's exactly the situation uh, with Sideways. If you've seen the movie before, it's all told. It's all told uh, uh, by the. It's, it's all told. It's, it's all told in the first person. It's told from the perspective uh, of uh, Giamatti's character, uh, and you really do find out exactly how screwed up this guy is because you see exactly. You hear everything he's thinking and everything that he's about to say and everything he doesn't say uh, at any given moment. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, I've uh, mentioned the running length of my picks. Remember that, uh, especially if you're trying to get your free book, you do want to stick it to the man by selecting longer, unabridged audiobooks. This is <laughs> unabridged uh, at 11 hours and 17 minutes. Uh, a lot of books out there are only six or seven hours. So believe me, you will be bringing the dogs of uh, the oligarchy down to their craven knees uh, by taking as your free book an 11 hour and 17 minute title. Uh, as I've only, I'm only about two or three chapters through it right now, but uh, the narrator is good. It's a great book, uh, and I, I'm glad to say that the, all the carbon, all all the damage to the environment that you're not doing uh, by promoting clean energy, uh, energy efficient and electric vehicles, I am burning up by keeping uh, my old car and doing like lap unnecessary laps around the neighborhood because I'm nearly at the end of the chapter. I just have to find out what happens next. <laughs> So we'll, well, and, we'll balance each other out really nicely. You know, and, and Audible is all part of my, my scheme this year. Uh, this year, there's certain things that I, I'm uh, working on. One is getting rid of paper, beyond paper. Like, none. No, and I, my, my pick actually is connected to that uh, later. But but the uh, uh, but it's I, I'm, I'm just kind of, I don't want to buy any more paper. So anyway, go to audible.com slash Mac break uh, to get your free book if you haven't already. Uh, definitely check that out. Of course, Audible is the leading provider of audiobooks uh, with more than 75,000 titles. Uh, you can get, you know, whether it's fiction, nonfiction, or periodicals, this is the place to check it out. Um, so, uh, and, and again, get your free one going to audible.com slash Mac break. And now, without further ado, it's time for our picks of the week. Tom, we'll let you go first. All right. My pick of the week is called Base, and it's from the Mac App Store. And it's the kind of application I'd really like to see more of. And that is you take your basic open source application. In this case, it's SQLite. You put a bit of a friendly user interface on it. Uh, nothing exotic, but just expose the basic functionality of the tool. And you slap it into the App Store, and you maintain it for people. Because there's all this great open source software out there, you can download it from SourceForge or the project websites or that sort of thing, but it's a pain to maintain. And if you want to show it to somebody and they say, well, that's really cool. Where do I get that? And you say, well, you go to SourceForge and then you look through the project and then you go to the download section. It's, it's pretty complicated. So what I'd really like is to just say, oh, you go to the app store and it's only a few dollars and, uh, and you install it on your machine and it's maintained. It is, it is nice. I had my first update on with Twitter and it was just like, would you like to update? There's an app that needs to be updated. Boom. Yeah. It's it's really a good experience, I think, at least potentially. And uh, I really use SQLite a lot. And so I'm looking forward to using Base uh, on the Mac. Great. So that is Base. Uh, Andy, uh, what is your pick for the week? I'm going to – I had a different pick of the week. I'm going to change it uh, because He's, of you're, where you're I am right now. I put, exactly. I'm, I'm calling an audible, uh, and so I did. Met, I did mention it earlier, but I'm going to mention it again. Uh, I just absolutely love the RAM mount uh, system for just putting putting devices in your car. Uh, if you go to ram r a m hyphen mount dot com, uh, you'll get to you'll you'll see the the, the, the company site. You'll see exactly the full range uh, of mounting devices that they have there. Now, if all you want is a device for mounting your iPhone into your in your car, uh, this is the one you want. Uh, because it doesn't matter how you want it mounted, they have a solution for you. Uh, my personal, for, for my car right now, because I don't really want to uh, take apart my dash and drill holes in it, I want a good suction cup mount. But the idea is that even in cold weather, this thing sticks like the devil. And this double ball jump, this is machined metal, 
Uh, and once you tighten up that, uh, that, that screw right there, this thing does not wobble. It does not bend. It does not. It's, it's like the thing is welded uh, to your car frame. Uh, I hate these. Uh, you get these. All, you can you can find all these plastic mounts that cost even more money than this, and and uh, this mount system would cost about twenty twenty five dollars here. I've seen plastic ones that cost thirty five forty dollars, where it's just bouncy, 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 bouncy uh, as you drive along. None of that with this. It's absolute rock solid. And the thing is, you can customize it however you want. Uh, I mentioned that I don't like to take apart my dash, but probably because the way my car is designed, it's, it's kind of hard to do. If you do want to do that, well, instead of buying the suction cup part of it, buy the actual hard mount version of it. The rest of it will be exactly the same. Uh, when you uh, switch from your iPhone 4 to your iPhone 5, you don't have to buy an entirely new mount system. All you have to do is buy a different head for this. Uh, now, this is a bad example because I just... I, like I said, I, I test so many things. It's just simpler for me to just have a little Velcro pad there. But you can buy custom cradles for every model of phone, every model of GPS. There's even a camera mount uh, that I often use, uh, that, 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 I, that I use all the time. Uh, it's uh, a lot of fun uh, when I just need to have a travel tripod just for my regular photo camera. Uh, oddly enough, this suction cup rig uh, works a lot better than a lot of portable tripods I've used because... Uh, it's, there's a good chance I'll be able to find something with a smooth surface that this will stick to just uh, quite nicely. And as we saw last week, uh, it turned out to be exactly, and, and even this week, uh, this was the perfect solution for when you need to shoot talking head video. You're just in the field. You need to stand up in front of a good light source, record you explaining something. Uh, you can either get this tripod with legs that will extend to about five and a half, six feet just to get a good angle on yourself uh, and somehow find a way to get that in your backpack, or you just get the suction cup mount with the camera mount uh, uh, head on the top of it, and then you just simply stick it to any window. You'll have light, and you'll have the right height. So uh, on top of everything else, like I said, it's really, really inexpensive. Uh, this is, I, I can't believe uh, that uh, I, I can't believe that it costs as little as it does. Uh, it's a good solution for today. It's a good solution for the future, and you can easily get in and out uh, of uh, any solution you want for less than 30 bucks. So uh, rammount.com, absolutely the best system you can invest in. Fantastic. That's a great, great pick. And, and um, my pick uh, is related to, both are related to drawing. And I don't believe, uh, there's one of them that I might have recommended earlier. But um, So the first one that I want to recommend is uh, Sketchbook Express. So this is in the iApp store, and this is brand new. I guess I, you know, I asked someone, and, and they said it wasn't actually... Um, uh, it was available before the i uh, the i or the app store came out, uh, but it is now um, it's now available and it's easier to download. Uh, and it's um, Sketchbook Express. It's free. It's from Autodesk, and uh, you can get it. You know, so this is a a, a zero a zero Alex. I'm, I'm very proud of myself. Uh, not 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 running you too uh, too hard on the on the uh, uh, on the cost structure. Now there's a Sketchbook Pro, which is only thirty or forty dollars um, now, and it's actually a little less expens expensive now I think than it was previously. Uh, but Sketchbook Express is a great way if you just want a simple drawing application that you can throw together, and um, and it's just uh, oh, anyway. I, I'm I uh, you know I just got it, and uh, and I was what I was looking for actually was a um, what I was looking for here was to be able to have something that I could do a whiteboard. So specifically, here you can see some examples uh, done with it. Um, it was, <laughs> I can't do that. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, but the, 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 the issue is you have, you have a lot of the basic tools that you need, uh, and it is so well laid out. And so here's what I use it for is I'm actually using this as I want a whiteboard, um, that is, uh, that you can just, um, so I can cut to it when I'm doing streams and draw on it or when I'm doing training and I want to draw something and I can capture it with QuickTime or I can capture it with, uh, Camtasia. Um, and so what I want to be able to do is, is, uh, be able to just quickly, uh, draw something, and I wanted something that I could turn the whole interface off. So even though you're seeing a bunch of dialogues here, you can actually turn the interface all but a little button to the, um, on, on one side and, and have it be a very, very clean interface and simply have this big whiteboard that you can sit there and draw on and talk about it, and it's free. And, it, and the responsiveness on uh, whether you're using a bamboo or a Wacom tablet, um, both of them are, uh, you know, just really, really good. So it, it's, um, it's super responsive. Uh, it, it responds to pressure as well as, um, you know, just being very fast as far as drawing goes. And so it is just a killer. There's no reason not to have this. If you've got a Mac, 
you got to download um, Sketchbook Express because it is it's super easy and uh, and it's definitely um, you know it's free. It's free. There's no good excuse not to have it. So uh, yeah. definitely check that out. I, I just love um, this app, especially for the price. Uh, and I and it's just a, if you want to use a whiteboard for um, things like your go to meeting, who's not a sponsor this time, uh, but go to meeting or uh, so your webinars, your seminars, your meetings, uh, screen captures, as well as just having fun drawing. Um, these are all things that you can do with it. So definitely check that out. The other one that's kind of connected to that, um, and I don't have a good example of it here to, to show you, is Penultimate. Have you seen Penultimate, uh, Andy? Have you seen Penultimate? Uh, no, I'm a big fan of Sketchbook, though. Okay, yeah. So Penultimate is, a, is an iPad app. And, and what Penultimate does is it's probably, and I just don't think I have the, the overhead camera, Leo's overhead camera working. Hold on. Let me see if I can get it working. Let's see if I do I have the overhead here. Oh, I do. Um, so I'm gonna. This will just take a second. As I, so, what Penultimate does is it's a little sketchbook that allows you to um, essentially uh, draw, you know, and, and really have that kind of. Um, uh, let me see. Let's turn this off and let me pop this up. Let me see if I can make this all work here. Okay. So, so here's my here's my iPad here, and, and I'm not as good at, as Leo is at doing this, but if we. Um, if I go into here and go to, let me see if I can show it quickly, my many apps here. Um, so here's your, here's your sketch here. And what you can do is, let me just see if I get the angle just right here. I can simply draw on it, of course, with my finger. So I can, and I can, you know, this is a test and I just love the quality of the of the not the quality of my handwriting which is really bad uh, but I really like the quality of you know of the of the it's 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 basically it's not just doing like a bunch of little hard lines it's actually smoothing those lines out and making it look really organic and, and really uh, nice to look at uh, and um, and it's great you just you want to get rid of it you can clear the page real quickly if you want to if you draw something and you want to send it you can send it by email um, you can uh, save the page to photos you can do you know so uh, you know a lot of times I'm, I'll be sitting in meetings and go okay so like we were working on our on our Mac uh, uh, Mac world booth and um, and so you have you know I you know I could draw it out here and say okay well we're gonna have Mac break here and we, we need some lights and we, we're gonna have the cameras here and so we're sitting there talking about you know where all these things are gonna go and what's over here and what's over here and then we can figure all of that stuff out real quickly and throw it out now I use a, um, a pogo stick with it you know I don't have it with me right now but I have a little pogo stick so you can draw on it and it's great for being in meetings and sketching stuff I mean I this this app is the one that really broke me from feeling like I needed a uh, paper. You know, when I was when I was explaining stuff to people, and uh, and I don't know how much it is. I, I I think I moved too quickly on that, um, but it's not very expensive. And so Penultimate, it's the best one that I've played with so far on the on the on the iPad for doing this thing. Sketchbook is of course uh, available on the iPad too. This one for what I was doing, nice clear interface and kind of set up for that uh, worked out really well for me. So um, definitely uh, definitely check that out. And um, those are my, my two picks uh, for, uh, for today. Uh, Andy, where can, uh, where can people find you? Uh, if you can spell my last name, you can just type anotgo.com to get, my, get to my blog. Uh, or you can type cwob.com that has links to my blog, uh, my email, all that other kind of cool stuff. I'm on Twitter at anotgo. Uh, really, a, a, lot of, a lot of this is key to the ability of people to spell the word anotgo, which is not something I was able to do until I was age seven or eight. So... Good luck to everybody out there. Great. And, uh, and, and Tom, uh, where, can, where can people find you? Well, you could follow Tomacorp on Twitter. Do you, do you Twitter much? Do you tweet no, much? No, I don't Twitter much. See, now here's the pressure. I don't tweet much. Now here's the pressure. Now you're going to have to. Oh, well, that could be. Or you might appreciate having somebody who only writes something when they have something to say. That's yeah, not me. <laughs> I I just um, I write stuff when something crazy pops into my head, and sometimes I shouldn't. Penultimate, by the way, is 99 cents, so... For those of you listening, wow! Um, so it's that. super cheap and super easy. Uh, yeah, so uh, follow, so Tomacorp, Tomacorp. dot com is uh, uh, and Quaketronics. dot com. Okay. Fantastic. And uh, just a reminder to everyone who is watching that we are going to be uh, streaming from Mac World uh, next week, and we're going to be doing tons of coverage and tons of gathering. You definitely want to go down there. We're going to be at the uh, Pixel Core booth, uh, which is going to be, I believe, in the West Hall, and uh, we're going to be trying to shoot. We're going to be streaming live. And 
we're getting a 3D camera. So we're going to actually be attempting to stream in 3D. Oh, Tom's got an example of, of uh, what you need uh, to do this. So here we go. So there it is. Uh, it's hard to see on the, on the screen there. It looks just like sunglasses here. Just get, just get it up a little closer so we can see the light. There we go. So these little red-blue glasses. Um, and uh, so, by the way, I posted that you, you need this Hannah Montana uh, there you go. It's, you, you'll be the utmost of fashion. Um, that you need Hannah Montana. The reason that I said Hannah Montana red blue glasses is because um, they they don't say Hannah Montana on them. There's nothing about them. It's just that those are the ones that are Amazon Prime, which I'm a little sensitive to uh, because I, um, you know, I, I tend to buy stuff and I Amazon. I go to there and see if it's on Amazon Prime and if it's not, then uh, I'll look around a little bit more. But but um, that's why those are the red blue glasses that you can get there. But they're like two dollars. And we're gonna be if you want to play with 3D. I'm also gonna be streaming tomorrow at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time uh, on pixelcore.com slash live uh, doing some early 3D tests and talking about 3D and talking about a bunch of stuff related to that. So if you want to get a preview of all of that, you can go to pixelcore.com slash live um, tomorrow uh, morning at 9 a.m. And, and uh, we'll, we'll be showing you a little bit of that. Uh, but then you'll see the full-blown um, craziness uh, uh, next week at, at Macworld. So, um, so anyway, definitely uh, uh, check that stuff out. And until then, break time is over. Get back to work.